Good afternoon again. We have another guest with us this afternoon. This is Margaret from the Wax Chandlers, who are major supporters of the National Honey Show. They have a stand downstairs and they're joined this year by Grands on the Make, who have a lovely stand with all sorts of things that they are literally making, including the bee here and Margaret's wonderful poppy. Margaret, tell us about the story of that particular poppy. Well, Val, I was just about to, to, to tell the ladies next on the stand next to us that we were coming up to do this interview and they said, would you like to wear one of our poppies? And I said, oh, of course I would. And she made it for me in about 10 minutes. So beautiful. Come down and get one at the stand. Right. Yes, I've seen the poppies on the stand and I've also seen lots of children sitting around and making things as well. Yes. And it's lovely to see the youngsters gravitating to, towards the activity and the crafts of, of uh, events there. Yes, but let me tell you about the Wax Chandlers themselves. The Wax Chandlers are uh, one of the city livery companies and uh, we celebrated our 650th year two years ago. Wow. Wow. Um, now, years ago, we were um, selling wax. It was wax that was the issue, not honey. So we are here today at the National Honey Show where the product you, major product you think from the, the beehive is the honey. Years ago, the major product was the wax. Was that to do with the churches? Partly to do with the churches and partly to do with light. Wax gave man light and therefore it was a very highly prized product. And even when you think of it today, wax is actually slightly more expensive than honey. I mean, generally speaking, you'll see honey for roughly eight to nine pound a pound. Wax is about 10 pound a pound. So it is a very sought after product even today. And you think, uh, about wax as making candles, and I'll show you this lovely candle that uh, one of our corporate members, Kerex, uh, produced for the King's Jubilee. There we are, rather nice, lo lo lovely candle. And but you think of uh, it's just candles, that's not the case. There are over 250 uses for wax, even today. And I'll then draw your attention to this rather nice piece of kit. Now, this shows that wax can be used in engineering, and this application is called investment casting. And you'll see what a neat, neat bit of kit, and that is all wax. And that's from this particular bit of uh, um, engineering supplied to us by one of our other corporate members, Darrenth Wax. And if you come down to our stand, we can show you a lot of other things they've made. In so what does this actually do? This is, is part of, uh, well, it's, it's uh, been used as a masking agent during the electroplating process. Don't ask me what the engine does because that's above me, I'm afraid. <laughs> right, so if we want to find out more, we'll come down to the stand. Come down into the stand the and you can ask the expert. We'll show you all sorts of things that we make. I mean, wax is used in wrappings for sweet um, uh, sweets, wrappings for, for bread. You know the uh, bread wrappings uh, around your loaf of bread in the supermarket? Wax is used in that process. And indeed, on the stand, we have a, a brick that's made out of wax that was used to build a brick house made of wax as an art installation. Absolutely fascinating. And I'm not just talking about a doll's house type size. I'm talking about a house the size you could get into. And Darren's Wax supported um, an artist to build this house in one of the streets in Southern. Wow. And um, how weatherproof is it? Oh, well, wax is used, of course, in, in the weatherproofing of um, uh, raincoats and things like that. So, so wax is, is waterproof. Wow. What about the cold and the heat? I would think it wouldn't be very wise to use it in the heat. And indeed, the wax house in, in Southwark did melt in the sun. Oh, so, that's a shame. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all right. It's obviously fairly stable at, um, in the cold temperatures, but in the hot temperatures, it would melt. Right, so pick your time and of course <laughs> you know that because you burn candles and of course as soon as they get the flame that the, the, the wax burns right. so what's the history of your association with the honey show right we go back many uh, years to, to almost the start of the honey show i think you'll find so you're 100 years old we're 650 years old okay. so we've been supporting you since this the, the start and we're particularly interested in the education of beekeepers of all sorts and I particularly am interested in the, the education of uh, bee, getting youngsters into bee farming, which means um, earning your living with bees, bees paying the mortgage. So the wax chandlers have a, a very 
um, proactive uh, involvement with the Bee Farmers Association and their apprenticeship scheme. And indeed, we've had some 30 uh, odd youngsters um, benefiting from that apprenticeship scheme. So how long do they take as an apprentice before they're ready to you know, stand on their own two feet? Well, it's a three year qualification. And at the end of it, you get the diploma for excellence in bee farming from the Worshipful Company of Wax Chandlers, a very uh, prized qualification. And indeed, as we are actually speaking, we are about to, to announce, and you'll get this first, we're announcing that we're going to upgrade the, the uh, level three, which it is at the moment, to a level four. We've just completed a, um, a pilot scheme with uh, the uh, Livery Company's apprenticeship scheme uh, to upgrade the, that apprenticeship scheme to a level four which means that our lovely apprentices, if they take the additional bit of qualification, will get letters after their names. Wow. So how many of the apprenticeships, sorry, young apprentices that have been through the scheme are actually now bee farmers themselves? Oh, you've got me there. I, I Several of them are, and I know several of them have launched their own businesses and that a lot of them, uh, are uh, working still in the, the businesses that they started their apprenticeship scheme with. So it's, it's a mixture, a mixture of, of what they do. And indeed, one of them has gone on to work for the National Bee Unit as really a bee impressive. inspector. As a bee inspector, goodness me. So what's next? What are you, going to, what are you planning to do next? Well, the wax chandlers have embarked on the next 650 years. And in two weeks' time, of course, we're going to take part in the Lord Mayor's show, which is uh, welcomes in the new Lord Mayor, who is uh, Michael Minnelli. Um, and his particular thing is, as we're talking about, is education. He's very into the education of um, all apprentices across the whole of the livery movement for all um, arts and crafts. Well, that's really impressive. So the actual ceremony takes place obviously in the city of london it does two weeks time and um wax chandlers will be well represented. the wax chandlers are very well represented and indeed a poppy from uh grands on the make will be displayed from the windows of the wax chandlers. a giant poppy so come along and see it um a giant poppy uh rolled down on the front of the the uh, wax chandlers hall as the lord mayor go the new lord mayor goes by wow that would certainly be something to see. Would you? I look forward to seeing that on video. Won't be able to make it into Central London myself, but you know, I'm sure that lots of our viewers will appreciate that pageantry, part of our heritage. So thank you very much, Margaret, and I look forward thank to coming and seeing more about this gadget on your stand shortly. <laughs>